to write programs that do multiple things or different operations. And we can create a menu where the user chooses a letter from the menu to perform one of those operations and include a sentinel value to end the program. It continues to offer the user operational choices until they choose to enter the sentinel value. And we do that through a while loop. So let me show you the program running here and then I'll show you the code. So this program demonstrates the use of a menu to perform various tasks along with the sentinel value to exit the program. The program allows the user to deposit, withdraw, or transfer monies in a savings account and or checking account. And then I have a list of menu operations here from A through G where we can deposit, withdraw, or transfer between the accounts. And an X to exit the program, the A shows this particular menu. I started with a savings balance of 1,000 and a checking balance of 500. And then we're asking the user to enter an operational menu choice, A through G, or X to exit. So if I choose B, and I enter amount to deposit into savings, let's say $425.75. Then I'm shown the savings balance has increased, and I see the existing checking balance, and I'm asked to enter another choice. Let's do C this time, and we're gonna add money into checking and we'll say $330. And so the 330 is added to the 500 and we get 830 and we see the old savings balance. I wanna withdraw from savings. So that's gonna be choice D. And let's just withdraw $100. So now I'm down to 1325. We'll do the same thing with checking E and I'll withdraw $100 there. And now I'm down to 730. If I want to transfer between savings to checking, I can use option F. And let's transfer that $325.75. And now I'm back to $1,000 in savings, but my checking has increased to $1,055.75. Let's go the other way. So I'm going to do G. That's going to transfer from checking to savings. And uh, let's just cha transfer $155 in that 75 cents. So now we're down to 900 in checking and savings has increased to 1,155.75. So we can continue doing these types of operations. We can uh, continue to deposit to either account, withdraw from either account, transfer from one account to the other. When we're all done though, we press an X. By the way, I'm using a upper, so I can do lowercase or uppercase on any of these menu choices. So I'll put a, actually, let me, before I do that, let me put in a letter that's not part of this, such as H. And I'm told that that's an invalid entry. This is the else of an if uh, elif structure. Invalid entry, use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or X. So let's try X this time. And I'm told program exited, have a great day. That's how menu of operations works with a sentinel value to exit the application. Now let's take a look at the code of how this was created. So here's my code. I've got some print statements to print the front matter, what the program does. I set a variable named choice to A, and A is going to be the menu choice to show the menu. So I want to start by showing the menu. If you remember when we ran this, the very first thing we saw was the menu of operations, and that's because we started with choice A. I also set beginning balances for saving and checking of 1,000 and 500 uh, respectively. And then here's my while loop. As long as choice does not equal X, then our X is gonna be to exit the program. So we're gonna take the value of choice and do an if, elif, else conditional structure. So if choice is A, we're gonna print the menu of operations. If it's B, we're going to ask the user to enter an amount uh, to deposit to savings. C, we ask them to enter an amount to deposit to checking. D, we enter an amount to withdraw from savings. And I also make sure that the amount they're trying to withdraw is not greater than the amount of savings. I didn't show this in the demonstration of the program running, but if we try to put in a larger amount than the amount of savings, we would get a print statement of, you cannot withdraw more than is in your savings account. E does the same thing, but for the checking account. Asking the user to enter an amount, check and make sure that it's not greater than the amount that's in that checking account. And if it is, tell them they can't withdraw more. Otherwise, we decrement checking by the amount. When we transfer between the two, we're going to 
kind of do the same thing. We're asking them to enter an amount to transfer from savings to checking, and they can't transfer more than is in the savings account. So we verify that. But if it's equal to the savings or less than the amount of the, than the savings, then we decrement savings and increment checking by that amount. Our ELIF of choice equals is equal to G is going from. Let me ch change my note here. Uh, this was a copy and paste error. This should be transfer from checking to savings. So here we're asking them to enter an amount. Again, make sure that it's not greater than the checking account. And if it is, we tell them you cannot transfer more than is in your checking account. And we increment savings and decrement checking. Our else then is if choice does not equal x. So this would capture anything other than a through g. And if it's not x, then we're going to tell them it's an invalid entry. If it is x, we don't need to do anything because what's going to happen is on the while loop, it's going to exit because choice now equals x. But before it does that, after we've made our choice, we're always going to print the savings and checking balance regardless of the operation. Now, I, I used a, a string variable, and it's going to equal savings formatted to two decimals with a dollar sign in front. And I used a comma to separate thousands and hundreds or millions and hundreds of thousands. Same thing with the checking balance. And then I use those two values in my print statement, and I write justify those so that they align nicely on the, the decimal values. Then I'm going to get the user's choice. And again, if they put an X. We exit the loop and we print program exited. Have a great day. So I'm going to suggest that you take the time to stop this video and enter the code as I have here. I'm going to pause here for a couple seconds. You can pause your video and then I'll resume and scroll down. Again, pause. I'll resume, and there's the there's the end of our code. So get some practice entering this code. Think about what you're typing in and how you're entering this in terms of the different indentations with the nested uh, if statements inside the elif and the nested if elif inside the while loop. So think about every line you, you're typing and why that's there. I've tried to explain it all. But as you begin to think about the process that will help you then in writing similar type programs, make sure your indentation is consistent, test it, debug, and make changes as necessary. And that concludes this lesson. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.